it, even been stuck in the middle of it. Mysterious swarms of little flying bugs around New York City. The massive surge of insects suddenly appeared this week. The health department says these insects do not present a known public health risk, but what are they? Where are they coming from? And more importantly, when can we expect them to go? I want to reporter Marcus Solis went to some bug experts to get the answers. I don't know. It's like uh, <laughs> the world's ending. No. <laughs> Let's hope not, but for some, it seems like a plague has descended upon the city. Tiny, white, woolly-looking flying insects with green bodies have seemingly come out of nowhere this week. You could be sitting, and then it's like you could see them like in a circle, going around in a circle. <laughs> yes. They're after you. Yes. <laughs> These are bugs, bro. Social media shows a bicyclist with bugs in his beard, others doing some serious swatting. Posters on Reddit asking what the insects are. They're aphids, and experts say the current conditions are a perfect storm for a swarm. The onset of summer humidity and heat, the amount of rainfall we've had recently, you know, localized heavy rainfall, and those are triggers that will, you know, make this happen, cause them to, um, their population to explode. <laughs> Aphids don't bite, they're harmless to humans, and you might not have ever noticed them because typically they don't fly, unless there are a lot of them. Their numbers reach a certain threshold, and then the newest to be hatched um, develop wings so they can fly away, and because, you know, they're too crowded. So they use trees as host plants, and this allows them to, you know, expand to different trees. This week's bumper crop makes lantern flies look so last year. So make room, Mr. Squirrel, and Pizza Rat, too. There's a new pest in town. They just get in your face, all over the, you know, your clothes and everything. No big deal. <laughs> Experts say the aphid invasion won't last for long. In Riverside Park, Marcus Solis, Channel 7, Eyewitness News appear to be taking over the city. Yeah, no one in the city seems to be spared from the pesty problem. Ashley Rodriguez has more on the possibility this phenomenon is actually related to the smoke in the air. I don't know what's going on in New York right now, but look at all these bugs that are just dying on my shirt. Many New Yorkers have noticed the newcomers this week. Small flies swarming in the sticky, smoky air. I was sitting in a bar in uh, Tribeca yesterday. Yeah. It was clear, it was fine, having a beer. I looked out the window and the gnats were just everywhere. Are they green or are they white? Some saying that they look like ash falling from the sky. Other people noticing that they bite and still others saying they don't see them at all. I'm coming from Brooklyn, I saw it. Okay, I may go to the city, maybe I have less of them. No. There's a number of theories behind the bug's arrival, that they're actually aphids who are exceptionally annoying but do little harm, that they're gnats flying south to avoid the smoke from the Canadian wildfires, or... It's like a plague of pestilence. What makes you say that? Because it's raining bugs. It's true that after a series of oddities and outrageous events, people just assume the apocalypse is imminent. Even the New York Times ran with the headline, first the smoke, now the bugs. These are just aphids, and aphids have a cycle where they become reproductive and they develop wings and they fly, you know, off from the host plant, usually a tree in this case. And so uh, it seems to have happened all at once throughout the city from north to south. I thought it was dust, and I got into like the office, and it was like a bunch of just bugs all over my arm. While I'm biking, and they're all in my glasses too. And while breathing in bugs isn't pleasant, they're able to breathe in the heat and gorge on the dense vegetation. Just look at what will probably be their short-lived presence as a sign summer is here. It won't be for much longer, I'm sure. Ashley Rodriguez, Fox 5. Okay, the shared experience. Have you been seeing these tiny bugs and swatting them flying around New York City the past few days? Okay, these are annoying insects. Look at this. They've been buzzing on social media, people have, um, about the bugs. They put video on and showing them on their clothes and just gross in them out. Many people think that these are gnats, but we have learned officially the bugs are aphids and they usually feed on plants and leaves. We spoke with an expert who says there's no reason to worry. So it's unusual, but uh, it's not a kind of insect that uh, harms people in any direct kind of way. I think it's unlikely that there's a direct connection between the smoke and, and the aphids. The aphids are frequently found on sycamore trees and I'll say indoor houseplants. 
Boy, between the right. aphids and the smoky air, who's ready for a holiday weekend <laughs> at the beach? Come on. Station of Mormon crickets happening in Elko, Nevada, a few hours just west of Salt Lake City. Today, the Elko County Commission discussed the issue. It looks like there's plenty to talk about here. Fox 13 News reporter Darian DeBrule got a firsthand look and spoke to residents about the thousands of crickets. It's gross. Elko, Nevada is a quiet town. Which is why the sound of thousands of Mormon crickets being crushed by tires seems so loud. It's like the popcorn noise underneath your tire. And then the smell is extremely bad. It smells like dead fish. And then, you know, affecting my race car driving for it to be slick is also obviously a big hit. I don't, you know, we don't have a lot to do around here, so that's something we look forward to. So to have crickets ruining it is really awkward. <laughs> Tiana Damon says the crickets have made Elko their home, Hello. taking over parking lots, porches, and plants. The little bit of vegetation we can have out here in Elko, they're going to eat it all. If a band moves into a, a crop that they happen to like, they can they can do some severe damage as they're out uh, just on the regular land uh, they'll eat the forage that would be available for other animals out there. Nevada State entomologist Jeff Knight says Mormon crickets are cyclical creatures. The last outbreak in northern Nevada was around 2006. This go around started about 2019. Uh, we expect populations to be high for uh, four to six years and then they'll drop back down again uh, and we won't see them. The populations around just south of Elko uh, are fairly high. Although crawling is their only mode of transportation, they move from place to place faster than one might think. They'll move up to a mile a day. So very often crickets may come into an area be there for two or three days and move on. We live clear over the summit, so we live about 10, 15 minutes away from here. So hopefully they don't make it that way. <laughs> they might not be able to be completely removed right now, but Knight says there are things people can do to mitigate them. You can uh, treat with chemicals. Uh, we recommend using a bait rather than just spraying for them. In Elko, Nevada, Darian DeBrule, Fox 13 News. As we squish them, they just eat, because they eat everything. Anything in their path, they'll eat, including each other. Once they start to get real squished on the road, it's almost like an oil slick. It, I actually, at this intersection, was coming home, and as I came around the corner, I came around a little too fast, and it, I about ended up in the, in the ditch full of water. It was pretty intense. Yeah, they really are a pest to the ranchers. They eat, just destroy their crops. I've seen them eat small mammals and things. Anything gets in the way and gets bogged down becomes food. Probably about a week and a half ago, the Mormon crickets have invaded this area of Elko and we've kind of let them go for the past week. Just kind of let them take their course, hoping they would move on and die, but they haven't. So today, the wife, I, my grandson, Levi, decided to go ahead and start to at least clean off the house, rid of all the uh, poop and pee, and uh, start to wash the house. And the only really way to start to get rid of them is to um, vacuum them up, sweep them up, put them in a large garbage can, and then just kind of throw them away. But we expect we'll have to do this for the next five or six days as they just keep coming and coming and coming. Millions of Mormon crickets have descended on six counties in Nevada, creating a bug-infested nightmare for many residents. So gross. A new <laughs> specialist, Shara Park, is in Elko with the story.
Yeah, good evening, you guys, from Elko. The Mormon crickets, they have converged on this community. They are in the shrubs. They're on the street. They are climbing the walls. They're just gross. They look like spiders. Yeah, and they poop everywhere. <laughs> thousands upon thousands of Mormon crickets creeping across Elko right now. We just stay inside. We don't go outside. They're in fields, roaming the streets. They're even climbing the hospital walls. Uh, it got to the point where just to get patients into the hospital, we had people out there with leaf blowers, with brooms. At one point, we even did have a tractor with a snow plow on it just to try to push the piles of crickets and, and keep them moving on their way. The crickets made their way into town on Monday and within days had taken over some areas of the community. They're in their migratory phase, if you want to call it that, and they're moving and, and Mormon crickets can move up to a a mile a day. Jeff Knight is an entomologist for the Nevada Department of Agriculture. He says the crickets have a four to six year cycle and then they disappear for a while. The dormant period for Elko ended in 2019. So now they're back. I do sympathize with people because, you know, it is it is kind of overwhelming to have these kind of populations, but they will go away. And they drop from the ceiling down. <laughs> yeah, they're gross. They're super gross. <laughs> For Precious Drake, the crickets can't move on fast enough. She draws the line when they're inside her home. I have a, um electric outlet that doesn't have a cover on it. And somehow one of them got in and was looking at me when I woke up. <laughs> Now, the good news is, for the most part, these crickets are harmless. They're more of just a nuisance, but they should be gone by the end of the week. In Elko, with lots of crickets, Share Park, KSL 5. It is happening right now. A small town under invasion. Oh, it's disgusting. It's, ugh, it's so gross. This is Elko, Nevada, besieged by Mormon crickets. It is disgusting. They are literally everywhere. Ground Zero, the once quiet home of Colette Reynolds. It was very apocalyptic feeling. I couldn't sleep. I couldn't eat. Everything you eat looks like a Mormon cricket. Colette says it felt like living in the Old yeah. Testament. Oh my God. And did it feel that way to you? Did it a feel bit. biblical? I prayed a lot about it. The critters are a migratory menace. They've plagued farmers here since the 1800s. Thousands of acres are infested. An outbreak like this can last up to six summers. The pests normally stick to the desert and away from people, but this time they found their way into town. And this is what Elko, Nevada looks like right now, a town covered in millions of these crickets. They're not aggressive, they don't sting, they don't bite, but that doesn't mean they aren't causing problems. Killing them only attracts more because, well, they eat their own dead, both gross and a hazard. I feel like I hear them crunching. Roads can easily become slick with bug juice and the smell. It just smells like dead rotten bugs everywhere <laughs> all the time the hospital a scene out of a horror movie we had people out there with leaf blowers with brooms trying to keep the side sidewalks clear the swarm has mostly moved on but there are a lot of bugs left hopping around and a lot of mental anguish lingers <laughs> a reminder of the futility of man facing mother nature steve patterson nbc
Have you noticed them yet? The bugs are bad after all that rain we've had. Mosquitoes are leaving their mark wherever they can. But Avery Everett bared the bites to remind you what you can do to fend them off. On what seems like a perfect summer day. It's been horrible. Uh, we're both covered in bites right now. Mosquitoes are making themselves known. Having a toddler, you definitely have to have them outside. So, um, yeah. Been tough. <laughs> Courtney and little Lucy Teal took a trip to Brackenridge Park today. It is very hot. <laughs> After days of rain, they finally felt the sun, but they also felt the mosquitoes. And Metro Health is reporting an uptick of the insect. And with all the rain that we've had, there's been a lot of stagnant water, which creates a breeding ground for mosquitoes. That health official says to stay safe, you should try and wear longer clothing, avoid perfumes outside, and spray repellent on your clothes, not your skin. Metro Health says people usually only assume that mosquitoes are near bodies of water, but they say you should also be prepared if you're near wet soil or a lot of leaves. And as long as we have rain, there's going to be mosquitoes. Even though today the rain has gone away, the Teal family isn't letting it take their spirits too. We've been to the botanical gardens. They were really bad there too, but I mean, it's so beautiful and the flowers are great. So it's kind of like you got to you got to pick your battles. Mosquitoes may be out. We're doing our best, but so will Courtney and Lucy hoping to make the most of every summer day. Avery Everett, KSAT 12 News. Right now in Mecca is beyond belief. The holiest city in Islam has been swarmed by a catastrophic plague of locusts during the holy month of Ramadan. But is this just a freak of nature or a divine intervention? Something remarkable happened in the just concluded fast of Muslims at Mecca. Many people consider it a prophetic sign while others think it's a miracle. I'm going to show you all the videos associated with this event. Locusts invaded Mecca, the most holiest site in Islam. This happened at the end of their holiest month, Ramadan. In this video, you can see people reacting to the inconvenience of the insect on people. It's all over the floor. It's not a good sight to behold. It is all over the place. They are moving in groups in numbers. So what is really going on here? This is an infestation. But why here? Why Mecca? Why just after the fast? If you don't know, Ramadan is a month of fasting and prayer and reflection for the community of Muslims around the world. They abstain from eating, drinking, smoking, or anything that's impure or excessive from dawn until sunset. It's one of the five pillars of Islam, and Mecca is the most holiest site in Islam because Muhammad, the founder of Islam, was born in Mecca. And it is toward this religious center that Muslims turn five times daily in prayer. It is expected that all devoted and able Muslims attempt a Hajj, pilgrimage, to Mecca at least once in their lifetime. Also, the great mosque of Mecca, known as the Masjid al-Haram, is home to the Kaaba. The Kaaba, the black cube, is the most sacred site in Islam, known as the sacred Beit Allah, House of God. It is located at the heart of the sacred mosque, Masjid al-Haram, in Mecca, Saudi Arabia. The Kaaba is believed by Muslims to have been built by Abraham and Ishmael. It is one of Islam's holiest sites and the direction of prayer for all Muslims. Every year during the Ramadan season, many people come to celebrate and partake in the fast. So, why would locusts invade such a holy site? It is a question in the heart of many. This is because in Islam, in Christianity, Judaism and Buddhism, locust infestation is considered a sign of judgment or punishment. The Bible and the Quran, the holy books of two of the most followed religions on earth, have described and referred to locusts as menacing and strong creatures that bring misery to those facing its wrath. So is this a sign of punishment or judgment in Mecca? Muslims online believe it is a miracle. What do you think this is, a miracle or a sign of punishment? In the Quran, verse 133 of chapter 7 says, So, we let loose upon them the flood and the locusts and the lice and the frogs and blood, all explicit signs, but they were too arrogant. They were a sinful people. Here, the Quran says it's a plague. First, it talks about the flood. Videos of flooding in Mecca have been circulating the internet, which you can see here. Torrential rain accompanied by hailstorms and flash flood in Mecca. And now low cost? Yet they say it is a miracle? But the Quran says it is not a miracle. It even says the people were arrogant and sinful. 
When God was dealing with Pharaoh, he told him in the book of Exodus, chapter 10, verse 4, If you refuse to let them go, I will bring locusts into your country tomorrow. You already know the story of how Pharaoh refused to let the children of Israel go. And one of the punishments God brought on Egypt was an invasion of locusts. Exodus chapter 10, verse 12 says, And the Lord said to Moses, Stretch out your hand over Egypt, so that locusts swarm over the land and devour everything growing in the fields, everything left by the hail. In the Bible, the book of Nahum, chapter 3, verse 15 says, There the fire will consume you, the sword will cut you down, they will devour you like a swarm of locusts, multiply like grasshoppers, multiply like locusts. The book of Deuteronomy, chapter 28, verse 38 says, You will sow much seed in the field, but you will harvest little, because locusts will devour it. This, in fact, establishes that locusts have been known to wreak havoc for a very long time. The visitation of locusts is not something to celebrate or a miracle. It should be a time of reflection. It is a warning that something is wrong. Now, this isn't the first time that Mecca has been infected with some type of bug. Just a couple of years ago, in 2019, a locust actually infested the site. Here's a video from January 14th, 2019 that says, A swarm of what appears to be locusts descend in a flurry on the Grand Mosque in Mecca, Saudi Arabia. The flood is a warning, and the locust is also a warning. Even the Quran says that. And the fact the flood happened while the pilgrim was ongoing and at the end of the fast locust invaded these places really calls for a sober reflection that something is wrong somewhere. And then in Revelation chapter 9 verse 3, the Bible says, Then locusts came down to the earth out of the smoke. They were given the power to sting like scorpions. They were told not to harm the grass on the earth or any plant or tree. They could harm only the people who did not have the sign of God on their foreheads. If these locusts were to invade somewhere else, Muslims would have agreed that it is indeed a warning or a judgment. But since this is a holy site and a holy month, they will never agree to that. God is sending humanity a warning, irrespective of their religion, to turn away from wickedness and follow the Lord. Jesus paid the price for your sins. There is no denying that there are many different beliefs and religions in the world, each with its own set of teachings and practices. However, as Christians, we believe that Jesus Christ is the only way to salvation. The Bible makes it clear that Jesus is the only way to God. In John 14, 6, Jesus says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. This means that there is no other way to be reconciled to God except through faith in Jesus Christ. The reason why Jesus is the only way to salvation is because He is the only one who has paid the penalty for our sins. All of us have sinned and fallen short of God's glory. Romans chapter 3, 23. And the wages of sin is death. Romans 6, 23. This means that we deserve eternal separation from God because of our sin. However, God loves us so much that he sent his only son, Jesus Christ, to die on the cross for our sins. In 2 Corinthians 5, verse 21, we read, For he made him who knew no sin to be sin for us, that we might become the righteousness of God in him. This means that Jesus took the punishment that we deserve so that we can be forgiven and reconciled to God. Moreover, Jesus' death and resurrection prove that he is the only way to salvation. In John 10, 17, 18, Jesus says, Therefore my Father loves me, because I lay down my life that I may take it again. No one takes it from me, but I lay it down of myself. I have power to lay it down, and I have power to take it again. This command I have received from my Father. Jesus' resurrection from the dead proves that he has power over sin and death, and that he is the only one who can offer us eternal life. It is important to note that believing in Jesus as the only way to salvation is not exclusive or narrow-minded. Rather, it is a recognition of the truth that God has revealed to us in His Word. God loves all people and desires that all should come to repentance and faith in Jesus Christ. 2 Peter 3, 9 The invitation to believe in Jesus is open to everyone, regardless of their background or circumstances. 
In conclusion, Jesus Christ is the only way to salvation because he is the only one who has paid the penalty for our sins and has power over sin and death. Believing in Jesus is not exclusive or narrow-minded, but is a recognition of the truth that God has revealed to us. If you have not yet placed your faith in Jesus, we encourage you to do so today and experience the joy and peace that comes from being reconciled to God through Him. Not the apocalypse, or even a plague, but it's pretty close. Oh, sweet baby Lord Jesus. I'm a prisoner in my own home. Like something out of a Stephen King novel, the summer of creepy crawly is here. We just stay inside, we don't go outside. Out west, from Idaho to Utah to Nevada, it's the snap, crackle, and pop of summer 2023. These katydids, also known as Mormon crickets, have exploded with eggs that can lay dormant anywhere between 5 and 11 years, but now have hatched in mass. They will simply form a tsunami and roll across the landscape, devouring everything in sight. And this is what's underway right now. The big red bugs are everywhere and eat everything. <laughs> Their migration's a natural phenomenon, and after a couple of months, they'll mate and die. But for now, this is a pile of dead Mormon crickets. Yeah, that is absolutely that is absolutely foul. Squish. Not to be outdone, from the mid-Atlantic and northeast to parts of the Midwest, spotted lanternflies, an invasive species, are back. Experts say they're harmless to people and pets, but they do pose a threat to several varieties of trees, orchards, hops, and grapes and especially threaten the $170 billion U.S. wine industry. This is going to be a major headache for our great growers, and fingers crossed they don't get to California and the Napa Valley. And as this summer of infestations continues, a portion of Broward County, Florida, has been placed under quarantine as state officials work to get rid of giant African land snails, which can grow up to 8 inches in length and produce 500 eggs at a time. Beyond their ability to damage hundreds of different crops, the snails can also carry meningitis. I don't want anybody to get sick, and they do leave a slimy residue behind, so God forbid somebody doesn't know, and they touch somewhere where they've been crawling. Kawana Jones first started seeing the snails at her home months ago and posted these pictures to Facebook. The very first one that we saw in that tree over there was like the, like literally like your fist. The state came right away and she says extracted around 90 snails from the immediate area. A host of unwanted pests nationwide has Americans itching for some relief. This is disgusting on so many different levels. I mean, Sam, I don't uh, know if we're ever going to be the same again after we saw that uh, snail. Um, so what can people do to keep bugs like these away from their homes? Sure. So good question, Savannah. When it concerns lanternflies, the time to act is right now because they lay their eggs in September and October. So what you're going to want to do is get a pest spray technician to come out there and to spray all of your landscaping down. What they can do is actually inject, inject uh, insecticide into the tree. They can also seal the bark. The snails like damp wood and plaster. So you want to stay on top of maintenance around your house. And that fencing and sealing cracks can help to keep out crickets. Now, when it concerns the lanternflies, again, and the good news here is that nature does appear to be taking its course. They are developing natural predators, cutting down on the numbers. But you might say they're still a little bit out of hand for the time being. Oh, say so. Savannah, say Oda, so. Oh, back to you. Maybe those snails could go after oh. me. Yeah. <laughs> Sam, thank you. Thank you Sam. It's right. taking a little while. Yeah. yeah. Hey, thanks for watching. Don't miss the Today Show every weekday at 11 a.m. Eastern, 8 Pacific, on our streaming channel, Today All Day. To watch, head to today.com slash all day, or click the link right here. Seven. Ah, we have a swarm of bees on the pitch. Oh. You can see them just to the right of the wicket. Players all taking cover, lying down. I've never seen this before. Massive swarm of bees just passing over the ground, heading towards the pavilion. You'll I see people there now. See them? Where do, can you see them? Yeah, they're just over by the tents now. If you look across the top of the tents, you can just see. Yeah, them. yeah, yeah! Wow, that is a big swarm, 
and naked eye, that is just incredible. Well, I've never seen that before. Huge swarm of bees. I was wondering why everybody was hitting the deck. It was almost like there'd been a thunder strike. Or lightning strike, rather. Well, now you know, folks. If you but see it's... a swarm of bees coming towards you, hit the deck as soon as you possibly can. Let them pass overhead. Well, They're it's... minding their own business. It's cleared the crowd from outside the pavilion, anyway. Everyone taking shelter inside. The question is, where do they head next? They're above the pavilion at the moment, we can see. They're heading our way, are they? Yeah, if we do go quiet for a minute, you can take you can it. Tell, we're, John we're, and we'll I have... We'll be hitting the dirt as well. <laughs> They're still on the pitch, down in front of that short boundary. Tom May's unable to move at the moment. And the rock is back on his feet out in the centre. That's the pavilion you can see in the background, away to our right hand side. Yeah, look, in front of the scorers. I'm surprised they've kept that window open, to be honest. Can they not go past the trees? That's the thing. Now the umpires and the two batsmen are now back on their feet as well outside. Bees stop play. That's the first time I've ever seen that one. Bees stop play. Have they gone? Well, Tom Mays doesn't seem to think so. He stayed prone on the ground. New at five, right on schedule. A virus that shows up with the mosquitoes and it's officially being tracked yet again in San Antonio. Metro Health reporting the first positive West Nile virus test result found in a mosquito pool. Jonathan Goto with how the county is tracking West Nile, how to keep it away from your home and the symptoms you need to watch out for. Today, the city of San Antonio Metro Health District confirming the first mosquito pool testing positive for West Nile virus on the city's southwest side. It is part of our mosquito control program that we do mosquito surveillance. Part of that surveillance requires mosquito pools be tested weekly from March through October. As soon as we were alerted by our in-house laboratory, then that triggers our response to that West Nile virus positive. A response Lara, an environmental health officer for Metro Health, says is implementing their integrated pest management plan, which is reaching out to the community and providing education on how to control and reduce mosquitoes on their property. Mow the yard, uh, trim back vegetation, that'll eliminate the spots that mosquitoes like to rest. Also, you want to remove standing water. According to health experts, most people infected with the West Nile virus do not feel sick. About one in five people develop a fever and other symptoms like a headache, a rash, muscle and body pains, vomiting, and even diarrhea. So during the next several months, health experts advise protecting yourself, spraying insect repellent on clothing, and remember mosquitoes can bite through thin clothing as well. Also know insect repellents should not be used on young infants, wearing long sleeve shirts, long pants and socks to protect exposed skin during dusk and dawn, which is when mosquitoes are most active. And using air conditioning inside your home or making sure there are screens on all doors and windows to keep mosquitoes from entering the house. Now, Lara says people can dial 311, the city main line, to report any issues regarding mosquitoes on city public property. Jonathan Cotto, KSAT 12 News. Keep up to date with all of San Antonio's top news, weather, and so much more by clicking the like and subscribe buttons below. And once again, thanks for watching. KSAT.
Sit, Ubu, sit. Good dog. 